Hey guys, it's Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Um, I forgot to make an intro for this video, so I'm just doing it now. Uh, this one's over the what easy you can do chamber mods uh, for your heads if you've got like a say a Brodex IK heads where it's got that ledge. I'm going to show you how to take it out, how much fluid actually gains, and everything that goes with it. If you're like, wow, you're wearing a hat. I don't usually wear hats. I just didn't feel like fixing my hair for a video. I think hats cause balls in the baldness, and I'm, I'm trying to keep my hair as long as possible. Anyway, uh, enjoy the video. I'll go ahead and tell you this. I probably wouldn't have put out a lot of videos in the next few days just because um, I've got so many on the phone, I really need to get rid of them. So look for some like almost every day. I might do one funny video or something, although she's not in for filming, I can tell you that. So uh, anyway, enjoy the video. Okay, this is the chamber on the IK215. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this ridge you see right here out. It goes all the way around. Let me grab a better one. We're gonna take that ridge and we're gonna blend it out all the way on each one. Now this is how I do it. I use this right here. This is a 3 8 and it's an oval. Now this one doesn't have, um, it will clog if you go too fast, which in a way is what you want because you're not trying to remove a ton of material. One of the worst things you can do is you can use this and you dig too far out. You're pretty much just trying to blend this top cut, that's the top part of the valve job, into the chamber and get rid of this ridge that you see right there. You're trying to get rid of that. So you're pretty much where this machine part is, you're just bringing it out flat. That's the idea. That's what we want to do. Now, if you just try to do it right like this, guaranteed you're probably going to mess up your valve job. So how do you deal with that? Well. I have a ton of these, but you may not. What you need to do is you need to find some junk valves. And then you need to take it to the machine shop and you need to have them um, grind it down so that there's no margin. For those who don't know what the margin is, the margin is this flat part right here. So this is the valve job, valve where it seats, and this is the margin. What you want to do is you want to grind that, get the machine shop to grind it to where it's a and the reason for that is when you put it in, it covers up the valve job, but allows me to get in here with my burr to touch here and grind. If you don't, it'll push your burr too far out and you won't be able to get rid of the lip entirely because it'll be stuck because you can't get in there with your burr. So you have to have uh, the margin pretty much ground down flat so that you can get in here with your burr to get in there. Otherwise, like I said, it raises it up. Think of it like here. It will raise you up and you can't get down to where you need to be. This is the exhaust one, same thing. So, there you go. Now, let me grab my bird that I dropped. Sorry for the camera angle. I'll show you what I'm gonna, what I will do. I'm gonna put this in my Ford oven. What I do, as you can tell, see, it won't let me touch the valve job so it's safe. But what I'll do is the lips all the way here I'll put it against it and try making it flare out. I'm just going to go here all the way. I always start with this view first. So I can get this just like that all the way through. And I'll smooth all this up. And then I'll flip around and get this side. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like that. And usually I start here and I'll come down and around. And I'll come over here and get this one. And I'll come and do the exhaust, same thing. Then I should point out this too. See this part right here? I usually get it from this angle initially. So what I'll do is I'll just drag across it. And I'm just trying to round over that edge. So when I flip it over, it's easier. But that's what I'll do all the way through here. So let me go ahead and do this so you can see what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's all roughed in. I got the burr that's hit this. It's knocked down the, the angle there. So right here. And you can see I've gone this way. I'm not using this, just a pointer. But you can see how it's gone. And you can see I kind of ran it up here on the top because when I flip it over, I'll get this out and be on the way. But that's what you can do. Now, you were like, what can I do to mess up? One of the things you can do to mess up is if you actually try forcing it to dig in there, you'll create like a little trough. And that's actually, looks good on the flow bench. It's horrible because the air will like blow there and it shuts off the flow zone. So you don't want to dig in really, you just want to continue out the valve job itself. So you see that machined area, you just want to carry it out. 
don't dig in. The second thing is don't hit the deck. So if you have one that runs off this way, you're probably okay. And here, let me explain why. You're like, no, that's horrible. Let's say you're doing here and you go here and you stopped. Well, guess what? That's not in the gasket area. If you went this way, well, it's gonna have to be milled because this is where the gasket ring would sit. So you don't want it to go across that way if it happened. Ideally, you wouldn't want it to hit at all, but accidents can happen. If it's this way and you're within the gasket line, you're okay. It doesn't look pretty, but it ain't gonna hurt anything. This way in the gasket line, you need to be milled. So be careful of that and don't dig in. There's your two steps. Two things don't do. Okay, now I'm onto this view just so you can get a better idea. Again, same principle. You just use your burr here and you just bring out this, you just pretty much eliminating the edge here of it, bringing this top cut of the valve jump all the way into the chamber. That's all I'm gonna do. Of course, I'm gonna knock this off so it doesn't look as bad. Cause then I'll hit it with 60 grit, actually 40 grit, and then 80 grit. But that'll give you an idea what it is. But that's that's all you're doing. The only thing you really can mess up, like I said, is if you dig in. Like you want to blend this out, you don't want to be a little trough here. That's a bad. Other than that, you're good to go. Also, don't hit your deck, but that'd be pretty hard from this angle unless you just woo. Anyway, there you go. Okay, here's what the chambers look like when they're all finished. Um, it looks like I've done more because I have, and there's no sense in showing you because it's the same, pretty much the same method. So this is not the valve I use. See how it's got a thick margin in this? The reason why you can't use this, this is actually a valve I flowed with. So you can't use this to um, do your chambers, but essentially what you do, again, is just shove it down in there. But to do this, you need this. So what this is, is this is a mandrel and that's a cartridge roll. And in case you're wondering where you can go to get them, this is cylinder heads abrasives. This girl's name is Christine Lowe. She's amazing. She's super kind. You should get your stuff from there. But if you can't find the stuff there, although she has everything, this is a shorter one that you can get from Goodson. I'll go ahead and warn you, Goodson, like, they're always expensive on everything. So just letting you know. Anyway, what you do is you'll take this and you do the same method that we just did with the cartridge, with the uh, carbide uh, rotary file, which by the way, you can also get from her. Um, and you just do the same thing. And I'm pretty much just smoothing up with the lines that left from the car, from the rotary file or carbide burr, if you want to call it. Doing the same thing. That's all I'm doing. Okay. That's what it, this chambers are done. Now you're like, wait, it looks like you've done way more. I have, but only because I just didn't want to leave it that way. What you see here is there, this was CNC bulb blended. And the only thing I did was this. And I'll show you on the part that I didn't CNC bulb blend. Um, if you notice, it leaves a ridge like this when the CNC does its thing and stops. It leaves a ridge here. So all I did was with a carbide burr, I just ground this smooth and pretty much tapered this into the as-cast surface. Now, not here, obviously. And you're like, why didn't you do it here? One, he didn't even pay me to do that. I just wanted to see what would happen. Two, most your flow is one inch before and after the valve. This will gain you no flow, but will waste at least two hours of your time. It seems like it'd be opposite. It just doesn't. Um, on higher end heads that float a lot of air, that's a different story, not on this head. So that's all I did. Then I used the cartridge roll again and just smoothed up what I had done with the carbide burr, blending it into the valve job. Now, if you notice, we only really have three angles left because these are been blended out except for the undercut, valve job, and then the top cut, and that's it. I did the same thing on the exhaust because it leaves a nasty ridge where the CNC does on this, and if you can guess it, the exhaust is coming through, hits that ridge and really hurts it. So that's all it was done. Total time invested is a probably two and a half hours um, total to do. Now I did do something else that you guys can't do at home, but I'm gonna tell you. If you watched my other video about the IK heads, I told you that the back cut wasn't very big. It's like their new valves weren't very nice. So this is the valves that came with them. So all I did was I used my valve refacer. Most of you don't have that. So you need to take it to a shop like myself or some other machine shop in your town and have them put a back cut on it more. So this is the lap line. So I can see where it sits against the head. And then I had the, then I brought the, this is the back cut, the 30 degree, almost to the lap line. You always gotta leave a little. I feel better if I do. And this was a 30 degree. And that's it. And then I refloated. And let's look at the number difference. 
Here are the numbers and ignore the bad printout. I haven't had time to go get a printer. I have been swamped. And for those that haven't seen the previous video, go back and watch the one where it says uh, Brodick's IK215 head review. And if you did, you will see these numbers are stock. This was floated on a 430 bore. I know, I do realize most of you are probably gonna use these on a 4155. In other words, a 400 block or something like that. This customer's put them on a 383, so I floated on a 430 bore. That's their bore. So here were the stock numbers. With just the chamber mods here that I showed you, pretty easy to do. And just, like I said, blending in that ridge there, especially on the exhaust side, and then using the cartridge roll to smooth all the burr lines up, and then reflowing it. And then also, of course, the back cut on the valve. In case you're wondering how much this cost, machine shop myself, I'd probably charge you between 30 and 50 bucks, depending on how much you annoy me. Just kidding. It's probably gonna be 30 bucks. Some machine shops probably could charge as much as 50. It's gonna take them about 15 minutes to do. Anyway, so doing all that, you went from the stock numbers there to these. So look how much it changed. Now, one the tenth of an inch valve that really didn't change much. But look at this, went from a 114 to almost 139. All right. Big difference. This is 30 CFM gain at 300. 167 to 198. That I mean, it's 30 CFM. That's huge. It gains 20 CFM at four. That's, you know, numbers I care about, four, six, and one. So big, big gain there. It's still gaining here. Still gaining here. Now, here's where it's a little strange. At 700 valve, it actually lost. And I want to talk about this. The reason why it has to do with the back cut. When you add back cut, typically what happens is it favors a low lift flow, but not so much the peak. Um, however, most of you, and I kind of hate this statement, but you're never going to get to this guy for sure. He's running a flat type of camshaft thing with like 500 lift. He's never going to see 700 lift anyway. So this kind of tells me how stable the port is. Usually that's why I flow him this high, but he's never going to reach this number. So for him, all of this is important. So it's going to make more power anyway. Um, regardless, even the slight loss of flow, look how much it's gained here. It's a win. Uh, it really is. So that's just want to explain that. Um, huge gains there. Let's look at the exhaust side. Pretty good gain. Good gain. Dang near 20. Quite a bit there. More than 10. Uh, around, around, let's see, 4, 14. So good gains. I mean, you can get the idea. It, pretty, it picked up everywhere. Um, it's a win. I didn't do a back cut on the exhaust valve that comes with one. Like you can barely see it. But I don't put back cuts on the exhaust because it actually helps reversion. I say that means it makes things worse. So if you put a back cut on the exhaust, the flow numbers look better down low. But it also makes it flow better in the reverse direction, which is what you don't want. So no back cut on the exhaust. This is all from just blending that CNC line in and sanding it up. There you go. So if you get a mandrel and a cartridge roll and a carbide burr from this woman, you should be able to do this. And I, if I had a dyno, and I'm, I was at PRI and I looked at getting a dyno. So I talked to them and have an idea how much it's gonna cost, $70,000, which I'm still saving for, but that's not even the biggest cost. You got the room that goes with that. Because otherwise the dyno doesn't do very good. It does no good job if you don't have a way to keep the air consistent to test for this. But whenever that day happens, this is probably one of the tests where I test as cast, just do this and throw it back on and see how much power it makes difference wise. Because me guessing this is probably worth 20 to 30. And that's something easy you guys can do. I mean, a total investment out of cost, like I said, 30 for that to get done. Your mandrel is going to cost you about 15. The cartridge roll is going to cost you about 10. So you got $65 wrapped up in that. So it's a, it's a good deal. And of course, you're going to lose some time and hopefully you don't hit the deck. And don't ruin your valve job doing it. Otherwise, it's going to cost you more. But you get the idea. Anyway, thanks for sticking through this. And uh, you guys take care. Okay, here's a little bonus nugget of knowledge for you. So I'm tearing apart those 13 degree heads that you saw on uh, what to look for when you're buying heads. And I got one tore down. And I was tearing down this one. And then I spotted something. That's a lock, which is fine. It's a 10 degree lock most likely, but it doesn't have a lash cap reset what these do. None of the rest are that way. Now, inherently that doesn't mean that it's not a bad thing so much, like a horrible thing. As long as it's a 10 degree lock and these are 10 degree retainers, everything should be fine. The idea is just that it weighs a little bit different. It's also not the same.